Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Tonight, family members mourning the tragic death of a husband and wife killed in a plane crash in Detroit. It doesn't seem real. It's just hard to take in. It's just real hard on everybody. And we're learning more about what may have caused the plane to crash. A limo bus company leaving brides and grooms stranded, but it's the secret the owner had that's now revealed in these federal documents that will have you talking. Help Me Hank investigates, new tonight. Thousands of people packed downtown Detroit to take in one of the best fireworks shows in the country. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us for Local 4 News at 11. The annual Ford fireworks show along the Detroit River is in the books and it will be one people will be talking about for days. It was pretty awesome to watch like it always is. Yeah. The, those guys were having a good time down there and it was a it was a 24 minute show. Of course it didn't disappoint. More than 10,000 pyrotechnic effects could be seen from Detroit to Windsor and in every place in between. And in the middle of it all, Dron Terry, he was live on Belle Isle where people arrived early to take in the show. But let's begin with Mara McDonald. She is live at Hart Plaza where police took a new approach to, to security and it appears to have been really successful. Mara. It has been an extremely successful night for the DPD right now. They're in the middle of traffic management, just opening up Jefferson. And Justin, be careful. I don't want you to get run over here. We got people coming at you right. on bikes. Um, they are in the midst of opening up traffic here on Jefferson after doing some really different crowd management techniques tonight that really worked. DPD changed up the plan for this year's Ford fireworks, making two limited access areas, Hart Plaza as well as the plaza in front of the Spirit of Detroit, meaning your bag would be checked and you would be wanted. Do you feel like there is adequate security down here? Do you feel comfortable with him in this crowd? And do you think they're on top? Yes. This year, yes because they didn't have these barricades here last year. Brenda and her grandson, Jameer, found a comfortable spot to watch in Spirit Plaza. Every time when I look at the fireworks, when the fireworks happen, I just scream. Police shut down access to Hart Plaza around 920 and cleared the sidewalk, moving everybody over to Spirit Plaza. Uh, on the opposite side of the electrocuted area. The police presence was heavy and they were hyper vigilant, whether it was helping a lost little girl or moving some teenagers who were getting rowdy before it could get completely out of hand. There was serious video surveillance of the entirety of Jefferson and police managed and moved the crowd. So this department is serious about keeping this event safe like we do all events. Down at 920 was critical. Uh, they would not allow anybody else in. They cleared the sidewalk in front of it. But in addition, if you were going to leave Hart Plaza, they weren't going to let you back in. Same over here. You walk over here to Spirit Plaza. They would allow you to come here. They would allow you to get into Spirit Plaza, but there was going to be no hanging around on the sidewalk. They kept the traffic moving. There were no gluts, no issues, and no problems. So a little problem yep. with our technical thing, but definitely a great job by Detroit police and all yeah. the other agencies helping out. Glad to see things are moving orderly tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you do anything for 60 years, you are bound to build some memories. Tonight, some families on Belle Isle were continuing those traditions and others were starting new ones. Jermont Terry's there for us tonight. Hey, Jermont. Hey, Jason and Karen, I'm going to go on the record right now. Fireworks, it equals family and fun because that's exactly what everyone out here on Bell Loud experienced tonight. As you mentioned, some people, this is an annual thing for them, but they also tried something new coming on to Bell Loud this time. Every year, thousands post up for the best spot for the Ford fireworks. The riverfront view along Bell Loud keeps people coming back. And this is perfect. Love it. Some prefer to catch the sights both sides, but others, like Nick Todd, prefer pitching tents and passing the time with grandkids. And he's more excited about the Big Sky Show. Are you kidding? The finale! I got tears running down my face. I'm so excited. Nick and the crew would normally camp out in Hart Plaza, but this year they ventured to Bell Loud with no regrets. There's a big crowd here, but it's way better than being 
anywhere near downtown. <laughs> and the granddaughters keep coming over and say, how much time left, Papa? So Grandpa set his phone to answer that looming question. You got 50 minutes left and 11 seconds. You got refuge inside. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, it's, you can't, can't beat it. Steve Strickland and his family are still camping out, just in RV style. No comparison. None at all. The Strickland's family tradition now entails chilling at Belle Lau, but with a few more amenities. I can say if it's cool, we got heat. If it's hot, turn on the air. And no matter how people pass the time, everyone leaves happy after seeing this. A lot of oohs and ahs when the fireworks were going off. You know, one other benefit to having the RV that the Strickland family has, you know, they have their own restrooms, no waiting in lines. And I have to admit, I utilize those facilities tonight because you were out here for so long. Reporting live from Bell Loud, Jermont Terry, Local Force. Well, we, we, yeah, we appreciate you sharing as well, Jermont. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> good job, Jermont. <laughs> if, if, we, if we don't see her tomorrow, we know who we moved in with. Uh, by the way, if you missed any of uh, the spectacular fireworks show tonight, we're posting the whole thing on clickondetroit.com. You can find it right at the top of the home page. Well, clearly it was a beautiful evening, just perfect in terms of temperature and oh, wind. Yeah. Check in with Andrew. He dialed up a perfect one for this, Andrew. Oh, you got that right. We've got mostly clear skies out there still. Cool and comfortable throughout the fireworks and beyond as folks head home or still spend some time right here in downtown Detroit. Beautiful colors with our skyline, right? You're looking live at downtown with our Windsor cam. Good evening to the folks over in Canada as well who enjoyed the spectacle this evening. 64 degrees right now, still feeling wonderful. Cooler in many suburbs, already in the 50s. Look at that, low 50s in Lapeer. 52 degrees and temperatures fall a little bit more overnight. Most folks in the middle and upper 50s by dawn tomorrow and we'll still have fair skies through the night tonight and when you wake up on your Tuesday. That being said, showers and some thunderstorms. You see this big swirl in the atmosphere way off to our west. It is going to get closer. What does that mean in terms of showers? Do they arrive tomorrow, Wednesday or later? We'll talk about that and a big warm up. Another heat wave for our weekend. We'll talk about how high those temperatures get in your seven day forecast in minutes. All right, Andrew, uh, tonight we're hearing from the family of the couple killed in the small plane crash near City Airport. Yesterday, Greg Boaz, along with his wife Julie and son Peyton, were traveling from Texas to Detroit to attend a volleyball tournament for Peyton's sister. The single engine Cessna 210 crashed just a mile from City Airport after looking for a grass area to land. Greg's son Peyton was able to get out of the plane. He remains in critical condition tonight at Detroit Receiving Hospital. Greg's uncle remembers his nephew as a good, honest man. He was, he was good. He was just a good man. Simple thing to say, I guess, but he was a good man. The NTSB is investigating the crash. They suspect landing gear problems and low fuel. A 24-year-old man has died this evening after drowning at Dawson's Mill Pond in Pontiac. Police say he jumped into the water with a friend. He began to struggle in the deep water. Witnesses attempted to help, but the strong currents just swept him under. Rescue crews located him, rushed him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police have not yet released his name. Tonight, a Macomb County homeowner is warning others about car break-ins in the area. It comes just days after police warned about the crimes in Macomb Township and Shelby Township. Surveillance here shows a man in the driveway going vehicle to vehicle, checking to see if they're unlocked. The homeowner thinks he might be using a device to unlock vehicles because he's got something in his hand there. It happened Wednesday just before 5 a.m. in the area of 25 Mile and Romeo Plank. Police in Warren are investigating a case of animal cruelty after two people were caught using a power washer to clean their dogs. Security video shows a man and woman washing the dogs with soap. Then they use the power washer to hose them off. The owner of the car wash says that that water could be as hot as 110 degrees. They called cops as soon as they saw the video. Police are working to identify the couple. New tonight, a young boy stranded in a high rise and unable to move. You will see the dramatic video of the rescue. And this is no action movie stunt, although it sure looks like one. A passenger hitching a rod on the hood of a car. We'll check it out. Hank, what are you working on? A limo bus owner now under federal investigation. His illegal activity captured on tape.
We believe that he is a danger to the community. Now we'll show you what's being done to help the brides and grooms owed big money by the limo company now finding themselves in the middle of a legal mess. Help me hang right after the break.